All right, so welcome to another episode of Ghetto Antiques Roadshow. And there's an old adage, you get what you pay for. Now, I just started collecting, uh, well, it's not fine jewelry, but I'd say uh, vintage and antique costume jewelry. Um, some real gold, some not real gold, some cameos, silver, white gold, and all sorts of materials, porcelain. And again, here we go. Some more brooches, cameos, and porcelain. And more porcelain. I, I think I like the porcelain ones the best. And, uh, okay, and this one's ivory, by the way. So I don't know if you can see that. That's a painted portrait on ivory. All right, this happens to be, I tested it. It happened to be 10K on camera. And then when I tested it for 14K with the solution and the acid, it actually tested as 14. All right, so what did... $20 get me on eBay. Let's see, because my guess is as good as yours. So collecting these uh, pieces of, you know, like costume jewelry, uh, well, pretty much I'm not able to afford fine jewelry. Um, you get fair, good, uh, better, and best. And this may be under the category of fair to good. Um, the seller had an auction. Uh, buy it now. Actually, not an auction. It was a set price listing. For $35, you know, basically make an offer if you want. And I made an offer of 20 doll hairs. And the seller actually accepted, which uh, I was quite surprised. But the pictures were shiz. And when I say shiz, they were like the most awful pictures ever. So you really couldn't see the detail of the item. So pretty much I was buying in the blind. I figured for $20, free shipping, you know what I mean? What's the worst that could happen? You're not going to be like... Totally jazzed by it. Now, it's not going to be these quality. That's for sure. Not for 20, uh, 20 bones. Actually, I did really good at $18 uh, sometime last week getting a white gold. It turned out to be actually white gold cameo and uh, for 18 bucks. So, the seller thought it was silver. So, you never know. But I highly doubt it. That this is going to be like gold or anything precious. And let's just get this shit out of the way. Because I hate a, you know, a clusterfuck around me. And let's check this out. So I always want the oldest pieces I can find. But generally, the older, the better quality, and the more money. And at $20, you're probably not going to get anything good. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, this is actually much prettier than I thought. A little on the small side, but uh, really quite, quite pretty. And it's a cameo. What else? I started to get into them. Wow. Okay. Could this possibly be gold-plated or gold? That is the question. I do have a testing solution coming in the mail. A lot of these actually use 9K or 10 karat gold because the higher level the carat of gold, the softer the metal is, and the more likely the jewelry was to actually get bent up and damaged and dinged and what have you. So they would use sometimes like a lower quality gold, otherwise plated over nickel or brass. I can't tell. All right. But you can see the portrait through it. So now you know that this is not a fake. This is a real carved uh, shell cameo. Uh, if it was resin or plastic or celluloid or glass or the many other types of uh, materials they use to make them, you wouldn't be able to see the portrait through it. So that's a good sign. Okay, next, let's look at the catch and try to find out how old this is and the hinge. So our hinge is actually, I don't know if you can see that, a round hinge. So that's telling me 20th century, early 20th century, all the way through now. Uh, they use, use these round hinges. All right, let's check out the clasp. And the earlier ones had a, a, a C-shaped clasp that would have been Victorian or earlier. And, okay, we have a safety catch. This particular catch was actually patented. Now, I found a patent online for it, uh, dated 1910. I also found another patent with the same exact catch around circa 1900, 1905. So, but then again, they've used catches like this uh, in the 20s and the 30s. So, dating this is quite hard. So, I'm going to go with a conservative guess that this is. Circa 1900 to 1925. And also, how can you tell? Generally, from the 20s, I believe from the teens and the 20s on, the nose is changed. So you would get an upturned nose 
towards the 20s. Like the uh, earlier ones had more aquiline noses, more Roman noses, longer, and they were not upturned. So I'm seeing that this nose here is actually not upturned. So that's actually a good thing. But I'm going to go with this as Edwardian. Now, an earlier piece I have over here has a straight nose. Let me, this freaking camera does not want to focus. There we go. You see how long that nose is and how it slopes down straight? And you can see how the noses change over time. Now we got another example. Hold on, let's go ahead and get it. And this is probably my oldest cameo. I just started collecting. And if you look close up, look at that nose. You see how long and straight and how high the bridge goes up towards the forehead? That's telling me older. This is the other, this is the second oldest one that I have in my collection. And again, you can see that nose. Let's check it out. See how straight and long it is? And now let's check our item that we got today. So we always, I always do research. I'm not Dr. Lori. I'm not going to go, I'm a know-it-all. I know every single thing about antiques. I am a doctor. I have a PhD in art history. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to sit there like any other schmuck and try to figure this out. Like, what are the clues? What do we have here? Okay, so you're going to see that the nose on this one is more upturned right on the corner. But it's also long and slopey. Not like here. I'm going to show you a later piece. This was probably the probably like the decade from the teens to the 20s and let's check out her nose and now you see how it's pert and it's turned up right at the corner let's try to get a tight zoom if we can you see that nose sloping up almost in an upturned look and now hold on let's compare this is the one I got today now look at that nose and look at that nose the nose always knows and that's actually how you can help to date these pieces. And let's get our one from today. And if you look, you can see a big difference in this nose. Try to get my hands from shaking. No, I don't drink, I'm not an alcoholic. It's called anxiety. And <laughs> anxiety makes your hand shake like Parkinson's disease. And so, there we go, let's check it, check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go with this one is earlier than this one. This one, again, being from the Edwardian period, probably about 1910, 1920-something. This one is going to, I'm going to have to go with this one's earlier. This is probably the 1910. I'm going to date this to 1910. Again, not trying to be a know-it-all, not trying to be a Dr. Lori. And I have a PhD and I know everything and I'm going to tell you right now, this cameo was blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? All right, so what did I get for 20 bucks? I actually got quite a good deal. And let's check out similar ones. Now, I believe they call these pinchbacks. And um, it's like a style like that's like not real gold, like placed in a certain uh, kind of frame. I think they call this a pinchback frame. Not 100% sure. We won't know if this is gold until the 9 carat fluid I ordered comes in. I am going to test it. I'm going to clean it. But I really don't hold much hope that this is uh, really solid gold. Um, I do see some black. Um, it looks like it could be gold plated. It could be like 9K or 10K gold plated. Okay, let's check out the values. Let's look at the comparables and see, did I do well at 20 doll hairs? Okay, so here's the listing. The pictures were really not that good. You really couldn't see very much. I'm going to show you. It says that it says here sold for 35, but I did pay 20. And you can see that right there. <laughs> My dog's playing with his toy. Item price, 20 So here's a comparable. And we're at 132 starting bid. Will it sell for that price? We don't know. But we got like the same type of frame. Let's check out the back. And we got pretty much the same type of back, except for mine doesn't have a loop for hanging. Um, easily fixed by getting a pin converter that goes right over here. It comes with a bail, and you can just place it on a necklace. Now this one actually is 10 k It's marked 10 k um, that may mean that this is actually worth more. Now, I don't see much of a difference in the design. Now, let's check the back. And we do have some of that blackened wear that um, I saw on the back of mine. You can see it in there. So, who knows? Perhaps mine might be 10K. You never know. And here's another similar uh, comparable. It has, a, you know, much more of a pinchback frame going around it. But uh, at $149.99, now again, saying 10 k 
We won't know until I actually test mine, but we have that similar type of frame going around it, a uh, similar type of design. Now here's another pinchbeck frame, $399.99. Um, it's actually damaged over there, um, but it's facing left, which is much rarer. Let's see if it has a similar closure. Nope, this is actually older. It has a C catch, don't know if you can see that, and a tube hinge. So it actually is probably worth more, of course, because it's older. So for shits and giggles, I typed in Edwardian Pinchbeck Cameo. And here's such an example here on Poshmark for $250. And I'm trying to get an idea of the value of mine. Very, very hard sometimes to figure out. And it's also very hard to find ones that you're looking for. Here's a Pinchbeck, but it's an early one. This is Victorian. So it's going to be $469.96. Oh, yay, yay. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to afford that one anytime soon. And let's see, what else can we find that's similar? And you see, it's very hard to research these cameos, especially if you're like me and you're new to collecting them. Trying to find out the value is not an easy undertaking. So here's something that's uh, comparable. Uh, selling on Ruby Lane for $235. It is 10K gold. We won't know about mine unless uh, I get that fluid delivered uh, shortly. I'm waiting for it to come from Amazon. And so that's an idea basically of what something like this would sell for. Again, we have the same type of backing, a safety catch. We have the round hinge. We don't have the loop. That's really not a problem. Like I said, you can actually replace it with the converter. And so here's another one that's similar with that type of style going around it. It is um, Mark 10K. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if it's Mark 10K or not, but it says 10K. So sometimes these weren't marked with the gold content. If it was uh, actually rolled gold, gold filled, or actual real solid gold. Uh, but this one being at $349. Okay, so I cleaned it. Look how clean it is. Oh my God, it's gleaming. It's actually gleaming clean. I have a feeling it is 10K or at least um 10K uh like like over like nickel or some kind of brass or something like that, but it actually shined up like a new penny. So what would you expect this? You know, what would you expect to see if you were to sell it? Um, how much would you sell something like this for if you found this say at a thrift shop? Which chances are you wouldn't find it at a thrift uh, store because you'll find the plastic fake ones. Um, yeah. Uh, Okay, it's subjective. Basically, all of these antiques are subjective. Uh, prices aren't really, you know, you'll get a person like Dr. Lori that'll say, your item is worth $35. And uh, honestly, I've seen uh, pieces that Dr. Lori actually uh, appraised actually incorrect. Um, she has a PhD and she actually got shit wrong. So for example, she once did an evaluation of a lady's dolls, she had antique dolls, and she said, your doll is a German doll made in about 1890, and it's worth $350. And I've been collecting antique dolls for over 20 years, and I took one look at that antique doll, and it wasn't German, but it was a rare French fashion doll that sells between the price of about 2500 to about $3,000. So Dr. Lori even gets it wrong at times, and I started reading the comments after I was outraged when I watched the video that she told that poor woman her doll was only worth $350, where that lady would probably like resell it on eBay and lose 10 times that amount of money. And uh, everybody in the comments were like, that is a French fashion doll. It's worth a couple of thousand dollars. You're wrong. And then she started deleting people's comments one by one. So when it comes to pricing, I am not Dr. Lori. What I can tell you is I would expect to sell something like this in my Etsy shop for, I would put a price tag of about $200 to $225 on it. If it didn't sell, it will eventually sell. There's an ass for every seat. And believe it or not, nine times out of 10, uh, your item may sit there for a year or two or three. But if you do nice pictures, make it look fancy, and uh, everything in the background look like really highfalutin, uh, you'll get the price. If you show junk in the background and filth and dirt, and then you put a high price like that, guess what happens? Nobody wants it. 
And uh, yeah, so photography is everything when selling these things, giving it a really, really fancy, fancy look um, is actually adding to the value. I kid you not. I shit you not. And uh, so if I was to flip something like this, if I was an eBay reseller and I found it at a flea market or a garage sale, you want to sell it fast, put it for between $40 to $75. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Have a nice day. And antiques are very subjective. Um, what one person may not pay for that um, because they think it's sky high and way too expensive, another person will gladly pay it. Thanks for watching again another episode of uh, why I feel that that's my opinion. And, <laughs> and pretty much I'm not a PhD or a doctor like Dr. Lori, but my advice I think is way better than hers. So long, well, I'm being a little bit of an asshole. So long, I love you guys. Thank you for supporting my channel and I'll see you all soon.